Okay, cool. So, so basically what we're going to do is we're just going to start from from chapter one and work through um, every every study unit um, in prep for your exam. At the moment, your exam date is, I think, the 27th. Um, I hope that's now the final, the final um, exam table. Um, but at the moment, we work towards the, the 27th. Okay, so so basically, you can see here's a big slide pack of of questions that we're going to work through. Um, there is some hints, some extra notes that I'm also added, um, and where possible, we will also use use Excel um, if we get to to some of those things at the moment. Um, but I think probably more next Saturday we'll start using using the the Excel spreadsheet in more detail that I can show you in more detail how we do that. Okay, so the the first one and and again this is let's mark it also from study unit one. So you will, as I said previously, your exam will be nearly one or two questions on each study unit. Um, so there's 11 study units, two, two questions for study unit gives you 22. The exam is out of 25 questions. So there is one or two study units that will, will be an extra question. Um, the first part of the paper is study unit one to five. Um, normally the most, oh, well, normally the easier part of of your paper, um, but it it can also become very confusing sometimes in in some of these types of of questions. So let's let's look into this question. Which one of the following statements is incorrect? So. Again, just as as we go through the, these questions, very important in your exam as well. Just check what they're asking, the incorrect or the, or the correct one. Um, what what happens a lot in in these things is that you misread that, and then maybe your first answer is is then linked to a correct one and and you're happy with it and and you go on um so so just be careful okay so which one of the following statements is incorrect with regards to statistic and i ne nearly want to so when we look at statistic just remember what goes with statistic Sample. Sample. Awesome. Yep. OK. The other one that I normally say, what goes with parameter? Population. So that you can just see the, the connection there. OK, but let's now, because there's a few that are including sample here, so let's just see. Um, so a statistic is an estimate of a population parameter. Correct or incorrect? That is correct. Remember, we're looking for the incorrect one. A statistic represents a property of a population and not that of a sample. Okay. Not of a sample. OK, so we know it does. So that one is the incorrect one. OK, so. Again, my first language is also not English. Um, so this, you know, one needs to read this very careful. So 
we know statistics represents um, a property of, of a sample. Statistics represents a property of a population and not that of a sample. Okay, so so that is definitely definitely the wrong one. They could have said it in much easier English. Um, they just could have said a statistic represents a property of a population. Um, so, but they've thrown that in nearly to 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 make it to make you nearly think. Okay, but I also see the word sample, and John said, "Well, if I see statistic and I look at sample, it must be put together." So just be careful with with these kinds of of things where they try to trick you. A statistic is a summary measure calculated from a sample. Correct. Sample standard deviation is a statistic. Correct. A sample mean is a statistic, and that is all correct. So the incorrect one is the one where they talk about the population. OK, but remember, sample, statistic, population goes with parameter. OK, the next one. So let's see. So that was definitely study unit one. When we look at quantitative variables, also study unit one. So this is nearly your second question on on study unit one um, that, that, they, that they normally ask. So they normally ask one question about statistic or population or one of those kind of definitions. And then I like to ask a question on on the variables, and it might even be that you get two questions on the variables depending on on what they want to ask. Um, so let's look at which one of the following statements again incorrect with regards to variables. OK, so now we need to to really um, read this with care. Quantita quantitative variables takes on values. OK, so let's look at quantity um, takes on values. So up until there, it's correct. Which equals units up until there, it's correct. Numeric values. Mr. That, Gina, I can't hear you. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, can anybody else hear me? Okay. From our side, we can hear you, Jane. Okay, can you maybe rejoin? Yeah, no, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, let's, let's move uh, the mic a bit. Okay, cool. I hope it's better now for you, over King. Okay, so so let's let's then focus on on this one. Um, so quantitative, we know it's it's about quantity. The quantitative variables take on values up until there. We happy with equal units, happy um, numeric values that indicate how much or how many. Okay, happy with that. But we're looking for the incorrect one. Variables can be classified as categorical or numerical. Perfect. Happy with that one. Quantitative continuous variables results from counting attributes of an element. You. Quantitative, yes, but continuous makes it that when you count something, it's not one, two, three, four, five, six. Continuous is with a one comma, so I think that's a very difficult one. So let's just mark it first. Numerical variables can either be discrete 
or continuous. That's correct. So discrete is like one, two, etc. And continuous is 1.1 and, 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 and. Um, qualitative variables uses labels or names to describe attributes of elements, which is also correct. So the incorrect one is quantitative continuous variables results from counting attributes. So counting attributes goes together with qualitative and not quantitative. Okay, so that that is where where the difference comes in. Um, this is very likely to be a type of of question that you can get in the exam because it included the quantitative, it included the qualitative, it did include discrete, it did con include continuous. What it could still have included is, is some of the other variable names as well. Um, so this this might be a, a definite one that they can include. Okay, so here's another one of, of study unit one. Um, and I specifically have hidden, yes, Ellen. Hi, Jan. Sorry, just quickly on the previous question. Yes. Um, you mentioned something interesting. So counting attributes goes with qualitative, not quantitative, right? Yes. Okay. And then um and and, could, yeah. and it's more about the attributes than than anything else because yes. you want to describe the attributes with names. Um, so that's why why it goes with a qualitative. Okay, and not quantitative. Okay, cool. And then continuous is that for like decimal numbers? So one point one yes. to one. Okay. So okay. if 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 I ask, so how how a question in the exam can be on just this is something like. Um, it can be a question where, so if it's discrete, it will be something like, um, we've measured the class in height, is it a discrete variable or not? And they give you your option. Um, where they will say the height is in, centimeters or meters or whatever um, so that you know it is 157 centimeters or something like that a continuous one can be where they say how how far you work from home because how far you work from home and how far i work from home is two different numbers um, and it is a continuous number. Um, so, so when they when they nearly use the word, and, and you can check some of the, the pre previous papers. I'll share I'll, I'll share lots of old papers that when it was pre pre exam time, or also or pre online time. I've got lots of those papers that that I will share with you guys. Um, but you can, there's, there's words that you can pick up, like they will say the number of or the count of, so that you can see that when they specifically talk about numerical variables, um, how you can distinguish between those. Um, so, but I think I have some clues behind this blue box that you guys will might might help you as well okay so let's let's look at this one because this is nearly the most difficult type of question for for study unit one um because here we we have we talk about nominal scale we talk about 
ratio of measurement, then we draw continuous. So they basically in one question combined all your types of variables. And, and that is normally one of the most difficult ones that, that they can ask. Um, because as your study guide would be, it was you first looked at nominal scale or not, and then quantitative or qualitative, and now they throw in, in everything. So let's look what they are looking for. Which one of the following statements is incorrect? with regard to variables and their scale of measurements. Okay, so let me just, I don't want to, the nominal scale of measurement is the weakest form, while a ratio scale is the strongest form. Sure, now it is nearly going back and and I think if you look at my summary of those study units, um, the, the strongest is definitely ratio, um, because ratio will have to the one side of it, to the other side of it, um, it can give you decimals, it can give you negative. Um, it's basically an, a continuous, variable so that's why that's one of the strongest forms of measurement um where the nominal scale is one of your 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 weakest um remember what is nominal scale if if i can nearly ask that Everybody going back to the to the um, study guides for that one. So let's so question mark. What is nominal? But but let's go on um, because I want to sh to share some some things below here that might assist you as well. The mean and the median cannot be determined for a nominal scale of measurement. Okay, so when we talk nominal, the mean and the median cannot be determined for a nominal scale. Okay, so then I'm not sure there. Quantitative continuous, okay, so quant quantity. Quantitative continuous variables result from measuring attributes of an element. Element. Okay. Quantitative continuous variables measuring attributes of a uh, element. Yo, this also feels nearly a weird one. Ordinal scale of measurement is the is a higher level of measurement than interval. Okay. Ordinal gives you order. Interval gives you order. And it gives you um, distance as well. So there's definitely a from ordinal to, to interval. Um, interval is definitely a higher scale than ordinal. Um, so that one is definitely incorrect because interval is for higher. Quantitative discrete variables result from counting attributes of an element. Quantitative discrete describe counting attributes of the element. Okay, you count, that is correct. And now one can go back to the quantitative there because it was just a continuous one. Um, it's measuring something, correct. Um, so can, 
Anybody still tell me what is nominal? As a guess, Sean, I would say it's associated to qualitative variables. Okay, okay, so it is it it is qualitative. So let me give you some of of other things that that can help you in in the exam. So 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 what nominal is? It is when I ask you. Now I need to get this right as well. Um, so, so you can see it's categories with no orders. So, in which province do you stay? Okay, so we know there's nine provinces. Then, can I ask you what's the mean province? What's the average province that everyone is staying in? So, no, I can't. I can tell you um, where the most of the where students are staying, but there's no mean and there's no median. Um, so that's why that's like the, the lowest form of. Of cate categorical data. Um, where you will see now how this helps you is. Nominal, ordinal, interval and ratio. And what what I like about this is that what what we and that's that's what I sometimes don't like about about this subject is we specifically here said nominal but they can say a ordinal scale of measurement is the weakest form with a ratio scale is the strongest. And and then you can see, okay, ordinal is weaker, but it's not the weakest. Because sometimes they they do that where you will when we get to mean, median, and mode, they sometimes have a question of what is the central central tendency and then the first answer is median and and you click it and you go on um, but later on you'll in that same question there would have been maybe option five that said mean median and mode so you're not wrong but you're also not correct because there's actually three that that shows it so so with these just be very careful, um, but I think this will this will be a nice nice assistance to you, so that you can see what you can do, what is available to do. So you can see on on nominal, like I said, you can you can do counts. You can tell how many people are in each province. You can tell a mode because I could have said which province has for most students, but I can't do anything else with, with nominal. Um, we, when you have some other data, um, it just becomes much more rich. Now, that's why you will see ratio covers every everything and why that is why ratio is also your strongest measurement um, be, because you can do anything with ratio. OK, but I'll share this this slide pack in any case with you as well. Um, there's there's lots of you can see this 67 slides because that's not all for today. It is covering all the work that you need to to know for the exam. Um, and there is these notes on all of them, um, so I'll definitely definitely share that with you. OK, then we get into so that was those those were study unit unit one. Um, so there's 
nearly three types of questions that they can ask around study unit one. Um, they can combine it, they can um, like this question where, where they've combined nearly everything um, to, don't want to say a simple question, but a, a straightforward definition question um, where they then try to, to catch you out with throwing in the, the names that we are familiar with. OK, so let's go into. Into study unit two, where we nearly visually represent data. Um, and and you'll see I've got. Yes, there's a question. Hello, Jean. Hi. Yeah, I just want to find out the, the, the answer for for question three. I mean, yes. two, you didn't indicate because you left it, or maybe I didn't, uh, yeah. Oh, this one? Yes. Okay, sorry, so so let me, so the wrong one was D. Oh, okay. And, and the reason why it's D, they say the ordinal scale of measurement is a higher level of measurement of, of interval than scale. interval, and you can see it's not. Thank you. Okay. And that's why I think this this is such a nice picture, because again, it's it's open book. You can print it. You can have it next to you when you write the exam. Um, because to to now remember, sure, what is the what is all of these? I I normally know ratio and nominal. Um, I know that there's one that's when you put it in order. I totally I have forgotten about the interval, to be honest, uh, because one seldom does look at at interval. So, um, and I seldom ask it in a question as well. Um, so yeah, the D was the wrong one. Oh. OK, just saw that we're moving to stage five. OK, so we we switching off at 10 this morning. So let's OK. OK, so let's. Let, let's let's look at the next one. So so study unit two, you will see what I've included in study unit two is this you've seen in. I think something like this would have been in your your assignment. Something like this would have been in your assignment. So there's a few of those that I've included. Um, coefficient of variation. So we that we seldom seen the study guide, but then it is thrown in um, and then also going into into box blocks and, and those kind of things. Um, so let's let's see how far we can go into into this. OK, so. Consider the following cumulative frequency distribution. So it's already cumulative. Um, of distance from home to school for a sample of 50 grade seven learners, um, which one of the following statements is incorrect? Okay, so. I just want to add things into this. So that's already cumulative. So I first want to see how much is in each of each of these brackets. OK, so we know that that is four for the first one. The cumulative is 17. How much was in that bracket? It's basically 17 minus four which is 13. Okay, so we're now looking basically at. Is it the relative frequency that we're looking at? Um, so the next one, um, the 12 to 14, the 42 minus 17, oof, I think that is 25. 48 minus 
42, 6 and 2. So let's just count it again. So 17 plus 5, 17 plus 5 is 22, 42, 48, 50. Okay, so hopefully this will this will work a bit better. Okay, so let's let's look at what they ask. The percentage frequency of class nine to eleven. Nine to eleven is 34 okay so if they ask you the cumulative percentage then you would have said 17 divided by 50 which would have given you 34 but they haven't asked you cumulative they just ask you the frequency so that is why I wanted to to see what the what the relative frequency was, and that's thirteen. So thirteen divided by fifty is actually twenty six percent. Okay, so yeah, the first one was incorrect. Okay, but. Very easy to make that mistake because you see 17 you divide it by the total of 50 um, and and you get 34. But but they're not asking you the cumulative frequency, they're asking you just the frequency. Okay, so important as well is when they ask you, they need to they need to tell you that you're working or you must work out the cumulative else you go back to the basics and just work out um, the normal frequency um, they need to tell you in the question that you need to work out cumulative frequency else we assume always that you're working with the basics okay the midpoint for class six to eight is seven. So six, seven, eight. So that one is, is the easier one. How we could have calculated it as well is six plus eight divided by two, like we do with our median and average, and it would have given you seven as well. The relative frequency of clause 18 to 20. Okay. The two divided by 50 is 0, 0,04. If they said to us the percentage, then we needed to multiply it with 100 again, and then it would have been 4%. But they just ask us for relative frequency. Okay. So 2 divided by 50. Again, if we could have made the mistake, but yeah, at least they said relative frequencies to so 50 divided by 50 and get 100. Okay, so that is correct. The width of each clause is free. Okay, and, and this is a difficult one because what one always wants to do is to say eight minus six, and that is two. Um, but if you look at these and 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 just look at at what I've done here. Um, so this the same with the next one, 19, 11, 
12.30 or dinner. I think it's sometimes better to write it out like this. So how many numbers that does each class cover? Yeah, so each class covers three numbers. So your class width is three. Um, if it excluded one of those, then it is two, but then we need to write it differently. Um, so, so then we needed to say that we needed to write differently. I'll make a note just here so that I can show you a few different tables, how they can write it, including some numbers, excluding some numbers. Um, but, but here they say six to eight, so that covers three numbers, so the class width is three. Okay. The frequency of class 15 to 17, okay, 15 to 17. Okay, sure. Okay, so we did calculate that as six. Um, so that is correct as well. Just go back to. Okay, so very, very important. And I think I can't find my my notebook now, but when when I get a table like this, I normally first go to, okay, let's work out what is the frequency. Then what is the relative frequency? Then what is the cumulative frequency? Um, because that is, that is normally the the type of questions that that they will ask around it. Um, and now they ask it nearly without you having that information. Um, and that is where one can easily make make those mistakes. So what I would do if I were you in the exam, I would look at it and say, OK, they ask relative frequency, so I need to ask at that by all frequency, so I need to add that to the to the table. Okay. So that is just a note on this one. Very easy to make the mistake of working with cumulative frequency um, and and then not going back to some of the, the frequency and relative frequency numbers. So that will be sorry, that will be just frequency. And if we take the percentages or divide it, it will be relative frequency. Okay, I'll get some extra ones on that. So, so that, and what's interesting is that table is actually a summary of this. Um, so again, we look at the same information just presented to you differently. In the exam, and I'll I'll ask the lecturer if because this was this was out of the assignment, um, one of the previous assignments, but I will ask the lecturer if if there is questions that follow on one another. Um, because in the exam you can't go back to the previous question. Um, so you can't go back and look at what you've done with the with a previous question, like in your assignments. Um, so, and spe specifically these next two or three, there's information that you can actually use in the next set of questions. So I'll just ask the, the lecture how the but be set up and if there is things that if he has if he has set it up or not, that's also the question, but then at least 
can influence that it doesn't do that. OK, so let's let's look at at this question. So you get a table. Um, and they ask you certain things around the table. So what is quite interesting for me is. This was was study unit two. Now we go into a combination of study unit two and study unit three. Because you've got your representation of a data. But now they throw in quantile or you know, quartiles. Um, they throw, OK, so this is all about, about that and they throw in range. And now suddenly you have your measures of dispersion in in this question okay so so let's look at at possibilities so positions positions position okay so very important that the position um so position of and let's do that. Position of Q1 is n plus 1 divided by 2. No, it's not. Divided by 4. OK. Position Q2 is the same as median. And that is 2n plus 1 divided by 4. And the position of Q3 is 3n plus 1 divided by 4. OK, so we could have done that and said 1. So look at. One, one, two, two, three, three. So depending on what position that is where you use the one, two, or three. Okay, so position, let's let's first work out the position. Um calculator has been stolen by somebody in the house. So let's let's see. Position of the first quartile is 13. So we know there's 50 students. So 50 plus 1 divided by 4 is 12,75. In the textbook or in the study guide, we round that off to your nearest number. So that is the position of first quartile is 13, is correct. Okay, so 13 is there. So let's just do that. The position of the second quartile, okay? So 50 plus one times two divided by four is 25.5. Okay, so let's look at position 25.5. So it would have been there in the middle. Okay, so what they're telling us, 12.5. So 12.5 is actually the value and not the position. So the incorrect one is, is option B. But let's look at all of these questions. So the second quartile is calculated by the average between 25 and 26 observation. OK, that is correct. So basically, second quartile is the same as what we've done there. And it's the same as your median. So it is the middle value. 
um, in the end it will be the distance value will be 12.5 because it is in between in between the two the range 14 so range calculation is maximum minus the minimum maximum number 20.2 Minimum number 16.2. Sorry. 6.2, which gives you 14, so it's correct. And then the position of the third quartile, so it is 50 plus 1 times 3 divided by 4 gives us 58.25. Again, from a text or study guide, they say we round it off to the nearest, um, which is 58. And, and that is correct. OK, so this is looking at, at your table from a from your study unit two, but it's actually asking you all the detail of study unit three. So the the thing that that for me now is, and and I'm gonna luckily can go back because now if you look at at the next question. Now they ask us interquartile range. So the same set of data, they give us a bit more year. Um, but interquartile range, we calculate from the difference between Q3 and Q1. We've done it in this one. So we've done it. There is Q3. There was Q1. OK, so. If I now look at this, I now needed to do that all over again. It was 58 and it was 13. Um, so and that's why I don't want hope there's something like this in the exam because otherwise you're wasting time because you need to to go back again but this is now very easy because now we know q3 the value is 14 q1 the value is 11 so 14 minus 11 is 3 okay so that is that is correct. There is no mode. Sure. I I actually want to say that is just going to be wrong. Um, if if we look through the data, so mode means the value that occurs the most. So there already is a value that occurs more than once. Um, Let's see else. There's value that occurs more than once. There's a value that occurs is a lot. Okay. So mode would have been 12.5. If I have asked it somewhere, yes. Um, so I'm just a quick one on the on the topic of mode. It is possible to have multiple modes. So twelve point five. Okay. It it is so so it can be bimodal when when there's two modes and then they would just say more than multimodal. Um, that they normally normally they go with two modes. Um, at the most, but they can they can be more than one mode. Um, so so that is 
but then it still has a mode. Yeah. Um, and I think that is important. So if you have four modes, even you still have a mode and it's four modes. Um, it's not been no mode. So, so and I think that is the important one because even here, it could, that, this now is quite, quite straightforward with six, but you can see 13 was also a lot, 14 also. So it could have been that there was another one with six, then it would have been two modes. Um, sure. Cool. Okay. The mean, so that's why they give you that number so that we can work out the mean. Let's first do the median. We know that the median from a previous one was between 25 and 26. So between 12 and a half and 12 and a half can only be 12 and a half. Okay, then the distribution of a distance from home to school is symmetrical. Okay, symmetrical, we've done to be symmetrical. And, and that can also be a definition question, actually. You mean median and mode will all be equal to one another. Okay. So for that to happen in this, you mean should actually be 12.5. We at least know that one was wrong. Um, we've calculated it as 12.5. So if, if those three is 12.5, that and that must be correct. If that is 12, then the distribution is also not symmetrical. Um, so nearly without working it out, we know it should be like that, but let's let's work it out. So they say the sum of all observations. So please don't don't you don't need to go and count or add all the distances. I give it to you. It is six to six point six. And to work out the mean, we divide by the number of learners which is 50. So 626.6 divided by 50 is 12.5. So the mean is correct. And then because mean, median and mode is all 12.5, we know that it is symmetrical as well. Okay, so from that information, um, I made it just quicker to do this. Um, so it's one of those that I think you would have seen that in, in a lot of your assignments that, that you get data and you've done it and suddenly the next question is on the same data and maybe you haven't written down some of the things from it um, because here we go again. So now um, we've got more data. Um, so at least here they give us some information again. Um, so they say to us, the sum of the squared deviations around the mean has been calculated for you. And that is equal to 406.369. Okay, which of the following statements is incorrect in regards to the variance and standard deviation? Okay, this is quite interesting. Population variance. Okay, let's see. We're looking for incorrect one. The variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. Okay. 
Okay, that is correct. I'm just looking for the sample variance. They give us a VAT, population, standard deviation. Okay, so population variance, again, standard deviation. Okay, so they give us the two that goes together, the sample, and they give us the two that goes together, the variance. So what I would have done and it's probably not in here even, is I would have gone, so let's just because in here they tell us the, and remember the variance is equal to the standard deviation squared. Okay, so population for the population, they tell us the standard deviation is 2.851. So then it should be that the variance is that squared. Um, so let's they give us up to three numbers. Eight, so population. Okay, so there's a mistake in the population. Let's look at sample. Sample, they tell us sample is two point. Wait, wait, wait. Sample is, is the sample standard deviation 2.880. So sample variance 8.294. Okay, so that is fine. So we know that the sample one is correct, just with that calculation. So we, I know now that my sample variance and my sample standard deviation is correct because that is how I worked it out here. So in the exam, if you needed to guess, guess between those two. Um, so guess between what the variance is. Um, so let's see what else did they give us. Sorry. Um, 406 406.369, 406.369, 406.369. Okay, so we get that that variance. Um, is the same. So that is what your variance should be. So the variance is is the the incorrect one. Okay, so I now used Excel, but what you could have done, just simple calculation, that would have given you your variance. Of your population. Um, if you needed to work out your sample, Variance. Remember, it would have been fifty minus one. Okay, so your sample would have been fifty minus one. If you need to work out your standard deviations, you just take the square root of it. That will give you your standard deviations. So. We didn't need any of, of that information for this one. And luckily they have given us, um, again, the, the sum that we can work with so that we won't need to work out this whole thing. 
um, which at least is a positive. OK, let me stop there for the day. Our power is going off in the next few minutes as well. So let me just make sure that that recording is done before anything.